All right, so this is problem 3.27 out of Taylor's Classical Mechanics textbook. Before I begin, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up and subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. And this problem was actually suggested in my Discord, so if you'd like to suggest problems, you can do so by joining that uh, Discord link in the description below. Okay, so 3.27 says consider a planet orbiting the fixed sun. Take the plane of the planet's orbit to be the xy plane with the sun at the origin. Label the planet's position by polar coordinates r and theta. Show that the planet has an angular momentum magnitude of l equals m r squared omega where omega is uh, v dot. Is the planet's angular velocity about the sun? And then part b says show the rate at which the planet sweeps out area as in Kepler's second law is dA dt is one half r squared omega and hence dA dt is L over 2m. Okay. So this is also very helpful if we consider it in the context of section 1.7, which was Newton laws and polar coordinates. I'm going to kind of go through some of this again, but that's a very good section to read. So this is your y, your x. Let me zoom out. And you have say some vector r, angle phi, and then r hat points in the direction of r, and phi hat points in the direction of where phi increases. Okay, so we're going to start with this, and the equation L is r cross p, but p momentum is mv, or in this case, mr dot, okay? So we can say this is mr dot. These are all vectors. I might be a little lazy with my vector notation, but it's fine, okay? Vector r is going to be just the magnitude r times r hat, that direction. Now, the reason why that's important is if we take the derivative, dr dt, this is a product rule. So derivative of the first is just r dot times the second r hat plus r times r dot hat. Kind of weird notation, but it gets the point across. And now what we want to think about with the, the, that same picture there is two vectors. Okay. And we'll say this is r at t1 and this is R at T2. Okay, move this out of the way. And T2 is just some time, we'll call delta T after T1. Okay. Now, if we look at this as a triangle, so this is R T2, this is R T1, and we'll call this delta phi. So this is delta phi. Okay. And this as delta r, the change in those two r's. Okay. So we have this. And the reason why this is important is because we want to find. So here we go again with the text mode. There we go. Yeah, that delta r. Sorry, this app has been kind of a problem lately. Is approximately, so if we let T1 approach T2, then delta R is going to be essentially just the change in phi, d phi. And then phi hat, since it does have a direction. Okay? And that's uh, delta R hat, so the change in those two R's. So now, if we divide both sides by dt, you can see that r hat, well, d phi by dt, that is just phi dot times phi hat, okay? Uh, and I should mention, um, this is the derivative, r, r uh, dot hat, okay? Okay, so 
we know, and maybe this is better notation, dr dt, dr hat dt, I should say, is phi dot phi hat. And like I said, this is all from the plural thing. I'm just kind of uh, doing it again to make it a little nicer. Then r dot, since it is r dot r hat plus r dr dt, okay? Well, we can plug this in and we get r dot r hat plus r phi dot, uh, phi dot phi hat. Okay? Well, that's important because, again, angular momentum was r cross uh, mr dot. Okay? So, we have, we know what this is. This is r r hat. And this is r r hat plus phi dot phi hat. So then the angular momentum L. So first off, it's r r hat cross um, basically r r hat. But r hat r hat is just going to be zero. And that's because r and r hat point in the same direction as each other, right? That's the definition of a unit vector. Um, so because they're parallel, their cross products are going to be zero. So really your angular momentum is just going to be um, r times, and then we have mr squared. So that'll be um, r squared m. And then we have our phi dot. And then the vectors r hat phi hat is what we're crossing here. And again, in the problem, it mentions phi dot is equal to omega. And it's important to know that if you were to do a cross product, so if you were to put your hand, if you were to lay your fingers here, your right fingers, and curl your fingers towards phi hat, you'll see that you have a positive um, kind of coming at you, coming out of the board, which we'll call Z. So that is z hat. So then L is m r squared phi dot times z hat. And if they just want the magnitude, which I believe is what the problem said, it's just m r squared phi dot. Okay, so that's that part. For the next part, we're going to use kind of a similar idea with these triangles and we're going to let so if you have a planet it's going to kind of orbit around and do this little thing here um, from these two points and we'll say this is R and for a very small we'll call delta phi this length is also going to be R so we're letting delta th phi essentially go to zero okay so we essentially are going to have this triangle r r delta phi and you can think of this as the arc length s okay and if you want to find that arc length it's going to be just r times d phi okay and of course the area of any triangle is one half times the base times the height and then this of course is the base and the height is going to be just r okay so then the area is one half times r d phi times r so a equals one half r squared d phi okay now, if we divide both sides, and this is the change in area, by delta t, and we do the limit as delta t goes to zero, kind of being unformal, but that's okay, then a dot is just one half r squared omega. Now, if we want to compare that with what our angular momentum is, well, we found that earlier. It's m r squared phi dot. And also, 
by that same reasoning earlier, we can say this is one half r squared um, or I'm sorry, we said that omega is equal to phi dot. So this is mr squared. I didn't do it here. Yeah, I think they wanted that because they tell us omega is phi dot. So probably. Okay, so never mind. This is completely fine. And I'll just rewrite this as mr squared omega. Okay. So looking at this, we can see if the angular momentum is twice a so we can see it's twice a and it also has an extra mass because the um, the a derivative doesn't have mass in the equation so if i can just get text mode off here we'll see if that decides to work there we go i guess so two it looks nicer to say 2m a dot a dot or a dot, which is just dA dt, is the angular momentum divided by 2m, which is what we wanted to show. So, just to summarize really quick. And a lot of this you could have skipped if you just kind of wanted to take the equations from 1.7, um, that section. But uh, essentially, I kind of wanted to make sense out of some of them so you understand where they're coming from. Uh, basically, we're using angular momentum as r cross, uh, cross mr dot. And using our definition of r and r dot, we do our cross product. And because r and r hat are in the same direction, their cross product is going to be zero. So that simplifies it a little bit. That's important to know. Um, and know that r hat cross phi hat, if you do your right hand rule, um, looking at this first picture here, you can see that your thumb will be pointing out of the screen. So that'll be positive Z hat. I guess it doesn't matter because they wanted the magnitude, but um, yeah, there's that. And then for Kepler's second law, the way that you prove this is um, you look as the planet goes from two separate points and you're letting that time difference be very, very small. So we call it d phi. And those lengths of the legs of the triangle it should be the same if we're letting it as an approximation. So we call it R. And then we find the area of that triangle, like we would with any triangle. And we use arc length to find the base. And then we divide over by dt and take the limit as delta t approaches 0 to get uh, a dot. Um, so that's what we get. And then we can see the relationship between a dot and angular momentum. So that's how you do that problem. Hopefully it makes sense. And if it does, please give me a like and subscribe.